elevator off of the oxygen cylinder. I told you in real life, you would done your checkouts in the morning or the, when you first come on shift, and you would leave your oxygen cylinder assembled. But for testing life, we're going to have the regulator off as if you're just coming on to uh, duty. So really when we take the regulator off, we shouldn't have to untwist that T handle so much that it actually comes off. Okay? So lay it back down in your bag and set the, the regulator in, ne in next to it. Okay? So we approach the testing station. And again, this is testing only. In real life, we're going to go line number one, what happened to you, scene safety, MOI, nature of illness, no germs on me, personal protective equipment, BSI, how many patients are there, do I need to consider spinal stabilization, do I need to consider additional resources, what's my general impression of the patient. That's real life as we're going to practice in all of our scenarios, right? But for test taking world, you can say, is the seed safe I have on my BSI? Go snap, snap. Okay? So that's what all these skill sheets start off with that and make that safe. So go ahead and do that. Is the seed safe? Yes, the seed safe. Let me hear you. Because I'm going to be like your proctor. Okay? So the next step you would do is. Assemble your regulator to the tank, please. And in so doing, go through the appropriate steps, just as we practiced earlier. Make sure you visualize first that there's no debris inside. Before you did that, did you visualize? Make sure you visualize. You know, look in there first before you do the crack. You can actually, Sean, take it out for the test. Yeah, that's fine. When you're assembling. Yeah. It's ready to go. There you go. So try not to leave your right, your cylinder standing up all all by itself. So what's your PSI, Gavin? 2,000. Okay, great. What's your PSI, Sean? Okay, so hit a pause. The next step of the test is using your non-rebreather mask and applying it to your patient. So knowing exactly where that non-rebreather mask is, go ahead and pull that out of... Tubing should fall out. Okay. So what you do is apply the end of the tubing. This doesn't have to be like jammed on. So the technique with the non-rebreather mask is you can get up to 90 to 100 percent oxygen if you have a good seal. So these are called partial non-rebreather masks because it only has a one-way valve on one side. So there's always, as the patient is ventilating, ambient air coming in, diluting the oxygen that they're breathing. So you'll never get 100% with this mask. It'll typically be down closer to 90%. Okay. So, typically we would start at 10 liter flow rate. So go ahead and do that. Turn it to the 10. Turn it on, the cylinder itself. 
What's your PSI? Is it reading 2,000 or no? Okay, so turn it. One full turn, Sean. That's at least one full turn. Would we turn it um, on to 10 before we place the mask on the face? Yeah, I'm getting to that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, turn it to 10. So we've got the oxygen flowing. So we never put the mask on to the patient until the oxygen is flowing. Okay? So now we're going to take either a finger or a thumb and just reach in, close that valve, and let the oxygen reservoir fill up. So right there at the nose, close that valve, let the oxygen reservoir fill up. Now we're going to apply it to our patient, adjust it so that we have a good seal all around the patient's face, pinching it at the nose, maybe pulling the green tab up a little bit to ensure that just like that pocket mask, like we practice in rescue breathing in our CPR class, make sure we have a good seal. So is the purpose of filling up that bag so that when we transfer... I'm going to get, oh, okay. get that the next statement I'm going to make. So Mo's asking excited, some really right? good questions. I like the critical thinking that's going on. And the See. reason that we fill the pre-fill the reservoir bag, we're going to look at our patient. So when our patient ventilates, we've got oxygen flowing through the tubing. We're going to check it, make sure that there's no kinks in it. When the patient ventilates, this bag should not like completely collapse. So what we would do is if our patient starts ventilating and it starts collapsing more than a third, then we're just going to go up to 12 or 15. It just depends on chest wall excursions, as the medical terminology is, the movement of the chest wall. But we don't ever want this oxygen bag to collapse and our patient not getting a full breath of oxygen. So just to repeat, start at 10, pre-fill the reservoir bag. Sir, this is oxygen. It's going to help you. Make a statement along those lines to give comfort to your patient. Let them know what you're doing, one of those principles. So I'm trying to get a good seal on this mask. Just try to breathe normally. Pinch that right there on the nose. If, with our patient's breathing, that bag starts collapsing, go ahead and go up to 12 or 15. Everybody comfortable with that sequence? Okay. So go ahead and turn your oxygens down to zero, please. I'll leave the uh, mask on. So typically in our practice, fill the bag, apply the mask, and then turn it off just to conserve oxygen, okay, so that we're not changing out the oxygen cylinders every other day, okay, for more practice. So fill the reservoir bag, apply the mask, then turn it. Then maybe practice, have your partner say, okay, to challenge you, test you, okay, he's breathing in and it's collapsing, say, okay, now I need to move it up to 12 or 15 liters per minute, okay, and then turn it off to conserve oxygen. So the next step is, applies and just mask the patient's face, and then the, it says the examiner must advise the candidate that the patient's not tolerating the rebreather mask, because even though we provided some comforting words, sir, this is oxygen, it should help. They don't like that mask on the face. They're having respiratory distress, difficulty breathing. We're applying oxygen as a B-step intervention. Some patients are not going to tolerate that mask. And so really the nasal cannula is not applying a considerably better application of oxygen. It's more of a placebo, but at least for this patient, it's a little bit better than nothing. So what was the flow rate for the nasal cannula? Six. Okay, four to six. So the oxygen's flowing. So you can go ahead and turn it off. Take the mask off. Keep 
just some gentle twisting. Don't try to muscle it at all because they get sticky. Apply. Just go ahead and turn it to four. So let's try this. Maybe this will help a little bit better. And so the way we apply it, it has a little noose type of a thing. Plastic piece right there. So bring that plastic noose all the way down to the stop. And then see this little tab just below the prongs? That goes below the nasal septum. Okay, so you approach your patients. So let's try this for oxygen. There's typically a little bit of curve into the prongs. So we'll come in, we'll approach with that little tab just below the nasal septum. Bring the tubing back around the ears and then back up front. Control it and then go ahead and use that little noose plastic piece and cinch it up to their mandible. Don't strangle them, but just snug. So one more time. It's flowing at the flow rate. Start at four. Pull down the little noose. The little tab is going to go below the nasal septum. Prongs into the nostrils. Feed it back behind the ears, back towards the front. And then snug it down. Oxygen's flowing, and then in your training, go ahead and shut it off just to conserve the oxygen. So in the next step, the examiner must advise the candidate to discontinue oxygen therapy. Then you remove it, shut off your regulator, and relieve the pressure from the regulator. So, on patient care, it's running. Take it off. Shut it off, remove, again don't muscle it, just kind of just some gentle twisting. It's going to be tough because these things like to snug on and grab really well. Grab your wrench, lefty loosey, righty tighty, turn it off, leave the regulator. Regulator back to zero, lay the cylinder back down, oxygen wrench back in its appropriate spot. And then we take our piece of equipment, act like you're back feeding some rope, place your nasal cannula in its proper position in the bag. Place your non rebreather mask back in the bag. Okay, any questions on that sequence there?